this is John Cretunis, and welcome to Effective and Efficient Text Searching in SciFinder N. Over the next half hour, Jan Bauer, Scott Herzog, and I will show you how to search on a topic, filter an answer set, and modify and rerun your query with more precision. We will show you how to link to patents and references, save your answer sets, set an alert, and share results with colleagues. During the session, you are welcome to enter any questions into the Q&A box in WebEx. I've already logged into SciFinder End, and I'm here on the main query page. I will start with a broad search query. Ethanol fermentation with yeast. Notice the auto suggest as I enter the query. Next, click the search icon and launch the search. When you're searching in SciFinder N, you have access to over 110 years of published documents from journals, patents, conferences, meetings, and more. This query returns a reasonably large answer set with over 90,000 documents. A key feature in SciFinder N for reference answer sets is our relevance ranking, which uses a custom algorithm to sort the answers based on relevance to your query. It weighs multiple factors, including how close together the terms are, if they appear in the title, if they are repeated in the abstract, if it's highly cited, and more. And scrolling down, you can see that many highly relevant answers are right here on the first page. Now there are other options for searching references, including by time cited and by publication year. The default is sort by relevance and it's very helpful. All the filters in SciFinder N appear in a single column on the left hand side and the analysis is completed no matter how large your answer set is. With a very broad query like this, you can quickly get a better idea of the topics covered in your answer set via the concepts filter. Remember, every document in SciFinder N has been indexed by a CAS scientist who extracts the substances and reactions and assigns CAS concepts or keywords in a systematic way to all the documents. So while you are not searching the full text, you have the benefit of the full text as you have searched the key concepts covered. There are several benefits to scanning the concepts filter. First, you can see the specific topics covered in these references. I notice that yeast is a concept, but I also quickly see several yeast, bacteria, and other organisms that are discussed. I also see related topics, processes like filtration and sterilization, analytical methods, sources of ethanol, and more. The concepts can also give you additional insights for modifying your query. I can see that ethanol fermentation is indeed a key concept, but I also notice the more general topic of fermentation is present and I may or may not want to include those references. The concept filter has several tabs, allowing you to see the items by top count, alphanumeric, or to search on a term. You will see these tabs like this for any filter that has a long list of options, like company name or author name. I can use the search tab to see how we indexed a word from my query. Fermentation. Search. Notice how I'm now able to see references that cover specific types of fermentation or even fermentation apparatus, allowing me to go directly to documents
that cover topics that are most relevant to me. I can also search on a topic related to my query, like bacillus. And I see the specific genus included in references in this answer set. I could also modify this search, replacing the US with a wild card, the asterisk. So I can retrieve terms that include bacillus and bacilli and other variations. The scientific literature can be quite complicated and there may not be one perfect search that will find exactly what you're looking for. When you start with a general query and check the concepts, you can view the specific subconcepts covered across your answer set, allowing you to go directly to the most relevant answers, and also providing suggestions for follow-up queries. SciFinder N adds two new options for asking a follow-up query. Whenever you view a SciFinder N answer set, you will see this search bar at the very top that includes your most recent query. It is very easy to modify the query. Adding more terms, for example, and immediately running the search again. Also, every time you run a query, it is automatically saved in your search history. Your four most recent searches are here on the main search page. There's also a history tab via the clock icon at the upper right with all your previous queries. And this is very handy if you'd like to edit or re simply rerun a previous query. The history in SciFinder N has no limit as to how many queries it will save and no expiration date as long as your account is active. Back on the main page, you can click the Edit Search for the previous search and edit the search. Now my colleague Jan Bauer will now show you options for modifying your query and share more details of working with your answer set. Thank you, John. Before we adapt our query to incorporate some of the taxonomical terms which appeared under the concepts, I would like to introduce query building tools for informed searching. Logical operators, phrase search qualifiers, and truncation are wildcard symbols. Now three Boolean operators are available for our search queries, and, or, and not, and requires all the combined query concepts to be present in the documents or is typically used to combine synonyms and requires either term in the returned answer, not subtracts records containing the not connected term from your answers. Be careful with not as the attempt to narrow the search may be too exclusive and eliminate relevant records. Additionally, you can utilize parentheses to enclose search strategies and this will customize your results to more accurately reflect your topic. Most often synonyms are grouped with parentheses as shown in the example search for flavor or odor and vanillin. In SciFinder N it's also an easy task to tell the system to search phrases. In the search box type quotation marks around the phrase you need to find. And this will tell the search and then yet that you want to find the words you entered exactly as you've typed them. Nevertheless, plural forms and index concept synonyms will be retrieved as well. Truncation or wildcard symbols replace word endings or internal character strings. The asterisk replaces zero to any number of characters, whereas the question mark stands for either zero or one character. Hemicellule, truncated with the asterisk, will find hemicellulose, hemicellulosic, cellulitic, and cellulases. So let's apply some of these advanced query building tools to our search. Now I start by typing ethanol fermentation ethanol fermentation 
in double quotes to focus on publications containing this exact phrase. We have identified it as a concept in CA+, which guarantees we will find relevant results. Now, in contrast to our first approach, I'd like to expand the biotech organism search and include genera for the yeast fungus, as well as two genera for common bacteria utilized to ferment sugars to ethanol, namely Escherichia and Zymomonas. And among them is the famous model organism Escherichia coli. So I type and open parentheses yeast or Saccharomyces or Escherichia or Zymomonas. Close parenthesis. Now these terms will also hit the respective species names, which are indexed as concepts. And please note our analysts index to the highest degree of detail possible, so you might find species names as well as more generic terms. Concepts are not automatically upposted, so a generic search term like bacteria will not hit when only specific organisms, such as Zymomonas mobilis, were mentioned in the publication. So it is best practice to include a mixture of generic and specific terms in your search query to achieve a high degree of comprehensiveness. When performing an informed search, we would like to see all relevant answers, so we click the Load More Results button on the top left. Filters are found in the left column in Cypher under N. The document type filter allows us to refine to publications such as journal papers, patents, uh, or conference reports. Documents in Cypher under N are translated into English, and the original publication language is available as a filter, and this is uh, shown in the language filter here. We also included a graphic for the publication year time series, and uh, clicking on View Larger enlarges the graph and we can define an interval by adjusting the sliders at the bottom like that for instance or alternatively you can define a lower or upper threshold in the boxes below available at my institution is a new filter which shows publications with direct access to the full text in my case these are ACS publications and uh, local admins can link your organization subscription list to this filter and that makes downloading full text much easier. And below that follow the author and organization uh, search facets uh, showing Dalian National University at the top under the organizations, one of the major Chinese research universities. And this is a great field to analyze institutions active in the field of technology defined by the search. Publication names, scroll down, do you see that? Show patent offices or journal names. Now basic formulation information is indexed in SciFinder N as well. And you can even limit to specific formulation purposes. The standalone tool formulas then even allows you searching for multiple components of the same formulation. I'd like to focus once more on the concepts, and this is probably the most powerful tool in the reference searching area in Cypher N. It contains CA plus index concepts and medical subject headings from Medline. And on a related note, we will merge CA plus and Medline record content for identical publications into one database document. And uh, this enhancement is planned to be released at the end of July. Let's have a look at the search tab and define our concepts of interest. So I click the view all and go to the search tab. Now there are different types of sugars used for fermentation. If you are interested in pentosis, we can pull up the related uh, concept. So I type in pentosis. And please note, Cypher N automatically searches singular and plural forms of your search terms. Um, so which is why pentose pops up as well. Suppose we're interested in bioethanol production from dried cereal stalks. Entering straw reveals straw concepts for different crops such as corn, uh, wheat, or millet. And to keep it simple, we select all the concepts on the page. So all the 35 are selected automatically. 
Now we could still add further concepts to this list and play them as limiters later. So to give you an example, I search for hemicellular asterisk. And this will bring up concepts starting with the identical word stem and the asterisk finds further characters at the right end. However, hemicellulose is typically indexed as a chemical compound, so we will use the search within to find these substance entries. So what I do is basically I apply the straw filter, so my 35 selected terms. And then have uh, approximately 700 references left. Again, if I need to focus on hemicellulose, I can now search within results. And so I scroll down to the bottom and uh, on the lower left I do find search within results. And up to three text refinements can be entered here. So I put in hemicellule, hemicellule asterisk. And this approach uh, will find hemicellulose, hemicellulitic, cellulosic, uh, so just as uh, intended. So we do see hemicellulose in this record. Hemicellulosic uh, as one other example. All right, let's limit two patterns. So I click the respective document type filter and sort according to newest. So publication year newest. Now we can scroll through the results now we can scroll through the results and uh, then have a look at the different topics which are discussed. Mixed lignocellulose, pretreatment method and fermentation, uh, production from bioethanol, of bioethanol from cellulose containing material for instance uh, as well. And uh, we do see that record number 8 discusses ethanol production from sugarcane by pentose and hexose fermenting yeast. Now clicking on the title will open the separate record. I use the control left click interaction to open this up in a separate tab of my browser. And this way I can always get back to my initial search at any later point of time. You can open multiple instances of SciFinRN with your browser and keep working in the separate uh, windows. Now the main pieces of bibliographic information are displayed at the top and left hand of my detailed results view. I can see the different uh, national patent publications in the patent uh, family for this process invention. And below that we gather the concepts and uh, substance indexing uh, as well. Cornstraw was a hit of our concept filtering, whereas uh, hemicellule asterisk hit on the hemicellulase and hemicellulose indexed as substances for this publication. Before I hand over to my colleague Scott Herzog, I will quickly show you PatentPack, which is included in SciFinderN. PatentPack links you through to the location of the index substance in the patent full text. And this is the result of the work of our scientists who annotate the documents during the indexing process. And every SciFinderN user can benefit from that. You can access PatentPack from the buttons and links in the upper part of the detailed record or just start from a specific substance of interest. So if I scroll back down to my substances and click on the patent pack link of hemicellulose, the patent pack entry will be opened in a separate tab, as you can see, and you can view where it is mentioned. Note the little locator icon turned violet. You can see that here in the text. And on the left-hand side, we do find our hemicellulose. Alternatively, select a compound from the list on the left. So I can scroll up and um, if I like to know where silos is in next, I can click on the location link below the substance structure and then see that silos is actually mentioned in claim number one. And the biocatalytic process claimed includes silos and a pentose fermenting yeast as mentioned in paragraph G of claim one. Besides the interactive viewer, Patent Pack allows you to download an annotated PDF with a table of indexed compounds at the end, and that is called PDF Plus, as well as a plain full text PDF. All of these PDF versions are searchable text files rather than plain graphic images. 
Scott will now show you how to save information, set up alerts, and where to find organization searches. Scott, it's up to you. Thank you, Jan. I'm going to pick up with Jan's answer set and show what we can do with the results from a reference search. You'll see I've got the answers here. I've got the tick box here to be able to click a page at a time and select those, or I could select one at a time as I go through maybe the detail, and I might want to just select them that way. If I don't make any selection, I'll have the whole 245 answer set. And the first button here is Download Results. Once I click on that, you'll see it'll auto-generate a name. I can give it a name that I want. And the default is PDF, Results Summary, and that includes the task history and the abstract. If I want more detail from the answer set, I have that option, Result Details. But you'll see I am limited to the first 100 references. But I can include the concepts, substances, any combination of these, the formulation information in SciFinder N or Methods Now Analysis, or the citations from all those first hundred references. And I'm just going to go ahead and download that. And we can see Jan Specific Results PDF comes up here. We've got the search term that he started with, the concepts he filtered by, and he did that search within results for hemicell Yule with the asterisk. I've got a link in the PDF, so even if I share this PDF with someone else, as long as they have SciFinder in, they can open up this answer set on their SciFinder in account. And you'll see down here another link at the top of the references, and I've got those first hundred references. I've got the title, author's abstract, the graphical information. It tells me patent pack is available, and then I've and of course, once I open this answer set, I'll have the links in SciFinder and it tells me there are 15 substances. So really nice PDF output there. The next file type is citation. So if you're using a reference manager, a lot of times those will have a .irs import export availability. So you can send those there. A really nice feature is the Excel spreadsheet. And I'm going to save that. And we can see one of my favorite features, other than the lovely purple color, is that it automatically includes in your spreadsheet the filters. So it's turned this basically into a table with banded rows, so it's really easy to discern one row from another. But then I've got these filters so that I can search through, use text filters. I've got a lot of options to narrow down and just look at particular rows based on authors, abstracts, uh, any of this information that is in the spreadsheet. The next button, remember this was just 245. John had the 90,000 answer set. If I wanted to share that with another SciFinder end user, I can do that. I don't have to download them. I just have this envelope icon. And when I click on that, it will open whatever my browser's default email handler is for me it's outlook and you can see it's added a subject line shared results from scifinder n and it's put a hyperlink in there anyone that has a scifinder n account whether they're from my organization or outside of my organization they can click this link once i send it to them and they can deal with that 90,000 or a million answer set whatever answer set i want to share with them they'll be able to work with that answer set in their account. So it's a really nice way to uh, collaborate with colleagues. The next option is to be able to save the answer set. So this allows me to save it on my account. So regardless of what computer I happen to be on, as long as I have access to the internet and I can get into my SciFinder N account, I can look at these saved answers. So I'm going to save that as Jan's specific results. This is where I can set up an alert, and we're going to have a full webinar dedicated to alerts in the coming months. I can also select tags. These are my own personalized, customized tags, and I can add new tags down here. And once I save that, we'll see a little pop-up up here that tells me the save was successful. And I can go up there, and you'll see I already saved John's larger answer set here. And again, with the saved answers, I can rerun searches. So I can go all the way back to one I saved a long time ago. I can filter by the type of results I've saved, whether I have unviewed alerts, any of those tags. That's where I can uh, limit to just answer sets, even multiple answer sets that I've added one of these tags to. 
And uh, I'm going to point out this migrate results. If your organization started out with SciFinder and you converted to SciFinder N, you'll have the same user ID and password, and you can use this migrate alerts and saved results to bring all those over from SciFinder to SciFinder N, and then you can continue seeing your alerts in SciFinder N or working with your saved answer sets from SciFinder in SciFinder N. And what I want to point out right now is the combined answer sets. This is something I like to use. You can see we've got substances, reactions, or references. We're working with references today, so I'm going to select that. And I'll just point out that there is a context-sensitive help link here. So this will open the help to find out more about combine, about this combine feature. But when I have a broad answer set and I've narrowed it sometimes, I'm curious about, well, what is in that answer set that I that I got rid of when I went to that narrower answer set. And that's what I like to use this subtract for. You can see I've got add to just combine two different answer sets together into one answer set, or just look at the overlap between two answer sets. Sometimes that's helpful. In this case, I'm going to use subtract and start with John's broader answer set of over 90,000, and then subtract out Jan's specific answer set. So that will let me see just what is in the broader answer set that I got rid of. And you'll see I've got the 95,000. And again, I could download the first 100 or email this whole answer set to a colleague or save it on my account. One powerful feature of SciFinder N, new to SciFinder N, is when I do save this combined answer set, I can set up alerts on that combined answer set. So that is super powerful. Uh, one thing you will notice with combined answer sets is we don't have the hit term highlighting. So I like to use this search within results. And I've got that ethanol fermentation with yeast. Since I know that was in that broader answer set, that will bring me back all the hit term highlighting from that broader answer set. And that is the combined feature and saving and downloading. One more feature. I clicked on this a logo up here. That takes me back to the home page. And when I'm on that reference tab, there's one more feature for reference searching, and that is this advanced search. When I click on it, I can do authors. And so we, this is going to auto-suggest authors that we found in our databases. I can do multiple authors, so I can or together a multiple group of authors. I can and those authors with a particular journal name. And again, that's going to show auto-suggest journal titles. If I've got a volume issue page type of citation, I can use that there. I can also just limit my search to particular title words by using that title words there. And I can or together multiple journals or volumes or title words there. And then you can see I can and all in either of those, the journal information or the author information with an organization. So once I start typing in there, it's going to auto suggest patent assignees or uh, academic institutions, uh, research companies, any, any type of organization that we have found in our references. It's going to suggest those, and I can select any of those and search for those.